All right, now we've added uh, the risk-free asset. So we have a choice of investing in a stock fund, the bond fund, or the risk-free asset, and we're trying to find the best combination for our client based on the risk return trade-off that the client wants to make. But it's clear the client or whoever is investing wants to be on the green line, not the blue line. The question just is exactly where on the green line would you be? Now let me draw one little line here to give you um, some idea about this. Actually, I'll draw two of them. Would you rather be on which line? I would rather, you know, if you're right here, you get a 10% level of risk for less than 5% return. Right here, a 10% level of risk for more than 5% return. And right there, same level of risk and almost 10% return. So clearly, you want to be on the steepest line possible. That line, any of those lines are called capital allocation lines, but the steepest line here is the CML or the capital market line. And the idea is we want to find some combination of stock and bonds. So uh, right here is the stock fund. Right about here is the bond fund. So we find some combination of stock and bonds right about here we call this the optimal risky portfolio so that's the optimal risky portfolio what we need to do is find exactly what combination of stock and bond makes this optimal risky portfolio and then we can say alright our client wants to be somewhere along this line one of those points all right, so we have an equation for that. For the optimal risky portfolio, the weight you put in in the stock fund is going to be equal to capital RS, and I'll explain that in just a second, <coughs> times the variance of the bond fund minus capital RB, covariance of stock with bond, over capital RS times the variance of the bond fund plus capital RB, the variance of the stock fund, uh, and then hang on just one second. Okay, I'm sorry for the interruption, and this would be minus RS plus RB, all that times the covariance of stock with bond. Now, RS is going to be the excess return, so capital R, what we call excess returns returns above the risk-free rate. So this would be R sub S minus the risk-free rate, which would be 0.15 minus 0 0.03, which is 0.12. And then RB would be 0 0.07 minus 0 0.03, which would be 0 0.04. So that would go in everywhere you see the RB. And the 0 0.12 would be we see the RS. So what that does, that finds us the weight in the optimal risky portfolio, and then one minus that is going to be the weight in the bond fund. So we then have the following choices to make. A client comes in and says, I want a return of, let's say, 8%. Okay, so we'll put some money into the risk-free rate or the T-bill the and put some money into uh, the optimal risky portfolio. Okay, so what exactly is the optimal risky portfolio? Well, the optimal risky portfolio is going to be doing the math, solving the equation, equation I just had up there. It's going to wind up being uh, one second. Sorry, having trouble reading my notes. It's going to be 66.18% in the stock fund and 33.82% in the bond fund. So what we then do to find the return on the optimal risky portfolio, it's 0.6618 times 0.15 plus 3382 times 0 0.07 
that number goes into here we'll go right there and so now we have to solve we can say 0 0.08 is equal to uh, instead of having WF I have 1 minus WK times the risk-free rate of 3% times 0 0.03 plus whatever this RK is which I just solved for times the weight in K. I solve and I have some weight in K and then some risk-free weight rate. I mean some weight, excuse me, some weight in the risky portfolio, some in the T-bill. So after I do that I know I have a return of 8%. The next question is what is the, re what is the volatility of my portfolio? Okay, so to answer that question, move some of this out of the way. The variance of the portfolio is going to be the weight in the optimal risky asset squared times its variance plus the weight in the risk free asset times its variance plus two times the weights times the covariance. Okay, how much risk does a risk-free asset have? It has zero. Variance is a measure of risk, and this is risk-free, so that's zero, so that disappears. Covariance is how two assets move together. The risk-free rate, it always returns 3%. If the market's up, it returns 3%. If the market's down, it returns 3%. No matter what happens, it returns 3%. So it doesn't move, so the covariance between the two is zero. So those two terms fall away and you're left with this. So now we know a client wants an 8% return. We find the weight in the optimal risky, find the weight in the T-bill. We plug this number in and find the variance of the portfolio, take the square root, and there's a risk. And that tells us exactly where this guy is, which will be somewhere about here because that's about 8% and the volatility will be about 10%. Uh, and the other question is, let's just say that the weight comes out to be, I'm just picking a number here, 70% in the optimal risky portfolio. Well, we know that the optimal risky portfolio is about 66% stock, rounding the numbers off here, and 34% bonds. So the weight I would put in the risk-free in the T-bill would be 30%. The way I put in stocks would be 0.7 times 0.66. The way I put in bonds would be 0.7 times 0.34. This should all add to 100%. So now we can tell the client you have $20 million. I can tell you exactly how much to put in the T-bills. 6 million in the T-bills, and then I can tell you the exact amounts to put in the stock and the bond, tell you you get 8% return, tell you exactly what your variance is. Another way to look at this. Client comes and says, I want to have this volatility. Well, this is the easy one. I know the volatility of the optimal risky portfolio right here. Now, if I know the client wants to have a 12% volatility, I can just solve. Okay, so hopefully that's ringing some bells from what you've done before. Uh, what I want you to do is, given this information right here, uh, first of all find uh, the optimal risky portfolio. Now that we have the risk-free rate, I don't need the minimum variance portfolio anymore because I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be on the green line. So I only want the minimum variance portfolio if I didn't have the risk-free rate. But since I do, find the optimal risky portfolio. Second, given a client says they want a specific return, they tell you this return, I want you to find the weight you put in stocks, the weight you put in bonds, the weight you put in the T-bill, and the risk of that portfolio. The third thing, another client comes in and says, I want 
have a specific and by the way this should be be consistent with my symbols that should be a C client comes in and says I want a specific level of volatility you know 10 percent or whatever then I want you to tell me how much to put in the stock fund how much to put in the bond fund how much to put in the T bill and how much return the client should expect the next and last thing we'll do is talk about using this with risk aversion but for now that's going to be good enough